So I named my communion message, How Much Are You Worth? And um, it's a random psalm that I got. It's Psalm 1914. And it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The Bible Dictionary decides, uh, defines the word redeemer as one charged with the duty of restoring the rights of another by avenging his wrongs. Mm. This title is particularly applied to Christ. He redeemed us from all evil in the payment of a, of a ransom. In the Webster Dictionary, it said like this, redeem means to buy back, repurchase, to get or win back, to free what was distress or harm, such as A, to free from captivity by payment of a ransom, to extricate from or help overcome something that's detrimental. Jesus is that for us. Jesus is our redeemer. When he died on the cross, he redeemed us from sin. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers. In Hebrews 12, verse 11, we are part of his family, his sons and his daughter, and daughters of God. Jesus not only redeemed us from sin, but because he came to earth and became God in flesh, he understands our struggles. Mm -hmm. He understands everything that we're going through. And so he is able to not just redeem, but to help us in our times of need. The central theme of redemption in scripture is that, now I got this from a, a random website that I put in with redemption and, and it came up as this, and I can't remember the name of the website, otherwise I would say what it was, but it says the central theme of redemption in scripture is that God was taken, has taken the initiative to act compassionately on behalf of those who are powerless to help themselves. Mm. I thought that was an incredible mm. statement. Jesus made redemption possible through his death and resurrection. No one else could have done that. Only Jesus could have done it. And he paid the ultimate price to redeem us. That's how much you're worth. I remember years ago when I was still with my ex-husband in a domestic violent relationship, I had no worth of myself. I couldn't see myself as Christ saw me. I just saw failure. I saw broken. I saw helplessness and hopelessness. And nothing would be changing for me. I was scared if I left, what would happen to me? I was scared if I stayed, what would happen to me? But I had no power to do anything about it. I didn't think I could be more than what I thought of myself, which was really inferior, second-rate person. I felt like I was a pathetic excuse for a human, really. That, and I'm just being vulnerable and truthful here. That's how I saw myself. And so I just allowed the abuse to carry on and carry on. Then one day someone said something to me that helped me change my view. And he, I went to this random church and I had been into church for a very long time and, and um, it was up at Lincoln Cathedral. And I met a friend of mine's father and I hadn't seen, I grew up with this guy in my church and I hadn't seen his father for a very long time. And he said to me, and he knew nothing of what had gone on in my life. He'd known nothing. And I wasn't open enough to tell anybody. And he said, Zena, you don't know how much you are worth. You are worth as much as someone is willing to pay for you. Mm. Remember, Jesus paid for you with his life. Wow. Yeah, wow. As much as redemption is free, it certainly wasn't cheap, not for Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, God made flesh, the darling of heaven. He paid for me with his life. 
I am worth that much to him, and so are you. The day you chose the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, it was at that moment that you were rescued from sin and death. Christ paid that ransom for us. He redeemed us from sin. He restored our relationship with God. And when he comes back again, he's going to restore everything onto himself. And it's, and it's all this because of his death and his resurrection. And often when we, when we talk about communion, we talk about his death. But we have to remember that there was a resurrection. Mm. He's not dead. He's not on the cross. He's off the cross. Yeah. He's off. He's out of the tomb. He is alive well and with each one of us. And because of this, we have hope. When there's a raging storm outside, or in my case, inside my head, which is quite often. <laughs> when our situations seem hopeless, you do not need to be shaken, for, for you have been paid for. And he won't let anything overtake you. He is our shield, he's our protector. And he will work everything for good, because not one ounce of his blood will ever go to waste. Mm. No situation is wasted, and we are covered by his blood. So as we partake of these ambulances this morning, I just want to remember that sacrifice that he paid for his life because, I'm, because we're worth that much to him. He is our redeemer. No one can snatch him out of his, out of his hands. For he is God and we are his people. He is our brother. We are part of his family. And we are worth so much to God because he paid the price for us with his son's life. So this morning we just want to thank you, Father God, that as we take these emblems, there's nothing to this little wafer <laughs> and this little... I'm not even sure what kind of juice it is, Lord, but there's nothing in this. But we know that there is power when we break bread together. We know that when we take his, this cup that represents your blood, we know that there is so much power in it. We want to thank you, Father God, that you just love us that much and that we are worth that much to you. In your precious name, amen.